I'm Denton Davidson, senior editor at Gold Derby, here with Simone Kessel, who plays Lottie in the hit Showtime drama Yellow Jackets. The season finale aired, so we can let everything out. There was so much tension, and there's Lottie at the center of it, urging everyone to go on this hunt like they did as teenagers, and she's hearing voices again. And then she gets hauled off to the mental institution. What's going to happen to her? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> once this writer's strike is over, I will be able to answer that question. I'm not, I don't know. They never said anything. That last week was such a, you know, crazy time for everybody that I'm not quite sure what does happen to her. You tell me, what do you want to happen to her? I don't know. I've got no idea. Well, we need her to come back out because we need this story to continue. Um, or do we need that story inside the institution? Oh, that oh, that would be good too. But it was interesting yeah. because when they were teenagers, Natalie was supposed to be sacrificed and she was spared. And in this finale, it was Shauna's turn. And then Natalie ends up being unintentionally killed by Misty. That was a devastating conclusion. So I'm processing that. What was everyone's reaction to that behind the scenes when you're like, oh, my God, she just got killed? Uh, well, when we first got the script, I remember texting with everyone. We were on a group chat and we had purposely not had Juliet, you know, because I wanted to talk to her separately around it. And she was so cool. She was great. She was like, yeah. So she knew way before any of us knew, okay. obviously. Yeah. So uh I was like, this is really upsetting. I was really upset when I first read it. And so I read it, oh, we read it. I mean, that's a huge episode to read on its own anyway, regardless of just the Natalie death as well. So I, I was a bit blown away and I know, look, I'm new into this cast. So I imagine for Christina, for Tawny, for Melanie, that that's huge. And there was just tremendous support around it for, for Juliet and, um, and for each other, you know, we sort of became so close. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's pretty devastating. And a part of you kind of thinks, oh, it's a dream. It's gonna, it's just going to be a flash. That's what I thought. It really like, is, happen. is it a tranquilizer? Is she really dead? But then she's in a body bag. So I was like, I don't know. We're just going to have to wait. Um, but a couple episodes back, Lottie sees this antler queen in her therapy session. So that left people wondering, is Lottie not the antler queen? Is she hallucinating? I don't know what kind of tea she drinks. You know, this has to be so much fun to play. Just talk about playing her and how you interpret everything that she's going through. Well, first of all, I didn't know when we did, I think we did three psychiatrist scenes. The first one I did, um, we just wrapped it and the director said, well, given, you know, the psychiatrist is not real. And I said, sorry, what, what? And she said, oh, um, I think the psychiatrist isn't real. And I was like, what? So I had, you know, which was kind of great. So I got to feel what it was like to be in a, a scene with a, a psychiatrist. And then as it went on, you know, we really sort of, we it was so beautifully played in regards to Lottie mirrors the same clothes. I don't, there's just such subtle little moments where it like the psychiatrist is in a, in a burgundy sort of reddish top. So is Lottie. Lottie's in a cream top. So is the psychiatrist, you know. And so then when she turns into the actual antler queen, that's a complete turning point for Lottie in here. And she realizes that it's all come undone. And it's it's like, she's so traumatized with PTSD and, and tormented by the past. It's really resurfaced. She's pushed it down for long enough, but now it's actually really come to the surface. And when she sees the antler queen and knows that the girls are still here at the, at the retreat, it, that's where the beat to, beat happens. And oh. it was, it was playing that was, you know, I really, I mean, what a, what a wonderful gift for an actress to get to play those scenes, you know, like I, there was no sort of right or wrong. There was just, I just sort of went for it. Um, yeah. And it's such a great arc that Lottie goes through this season because at the beginning she's got it together. I mean, she's bizarre, but she's strong and a leader. And then she just sort of becomes unhinged. What what do you think brings that on yeah. for her at this time? I think I think the the girls all arriving there, and I think she even says in that psychiatry scene, she says, and they're all here, and there's there's Misty and Ty and Van, and what you know, what does it mean? And then as we realize with the audience in the same time that she's speaking to the Antler Queen, and then I think for Lottie, I mean. 
for Lottie, you're right. Like in the beginning, she is this, this guru, this spiritual healer and this woman of love and light. And so really I got all the beat changes as the character for the character. You know, I really got to play this really uh, menagerie of incredibly different characters and different masks to Lottie, you know. Um, but it was it was plotting where I was going to play those each little turning points through the season so that I also had somewhere to go, you know. So I purposely chose to play Lottie in the beginning of the season, very full of love and light and, and namaste. And then as, as we progress, we really see her come undone and the wheels fall off, quite literally. We hit rock bottom. <laughs> and literally different masks. I mean, what was it like putting on those masks? Uh, in that last episode, it's at night. You put on the creepy mask and then you just start charging Shauna. Um, Melanie plays that so brilliantly because there's always just like a touch of comedic timing. Like she's like, are we all really doing this? Like it's a little funny, but and traumatic. Time this- out. <laughs> time out. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, what was that? What was that like just filming that all together? We, we, we had to get our timing right. And also where we were running up the hill wasn't very far. And and I remember when we were doing it, I was like, go faster. I'm right behind you. I said that to Melanie. And she goes, well, slow down. And we're such Kiwi chicks that it was sort of, it was very funny, you know. And then I started pretending to do the Benny Hill song. Up the hill. So that was behind the scenes. Clearly that was not um, in the, once we were sort of all focused, but we just sort of had to keep running past camera to get that timing. It was a lot of fun. It was we had to kind of keep ourselves amused because here we are putting on these masks. But in the in the the, the world that you see, you know, it looks so this 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 the primal instinct kicks in with these women again, and it's what they know. So even though Lottie speaks about the past and what's happened, these women have pushed it, suppressed it until they don't these masks, and once they do, that instinct kicks in and the chase is on. So, and it's beautifully done with the duality of the the timeline, you know, with the the young ones in the cabin. Yeah. So, yeah, no, but it was fun to film, to be honest. It was actually a lot of fun. And people have have to remember that Shauna beat the crap out of Lottie when they were in the woods um, as teenagers. So I wonder, like, what is Lottie yeah. think about? Like, is she holding on to that at all? Because she seems like she's fine and let it go. Even in the moment, she was like, yeah, give it give it to me. Um, but do you think she, I mean, I, it makes you wonder if she was a little happy that Shauna drew the Queen Hearts. <laughs> I think so. I'm just going to say it. I think so. <laughs> I agree with you. I think, I think there's a part of you, you know, if somebody's done that to you, even though she wanted it, she asked it. And this is all in my own head. Everything I'm saying is just my characters. I'm created for my own character, you know, the choices I made. So I do think that, yeah, Lottie holds a little bit. I know I would. Um, but I think, yeah, that relationship with Shauna is of all of them. They're not as close, you know, um as say Lottie and Nat you know like yeah I just think that and even when she's there holding the goat crying earlier on and I think 207 no 208 Lottie is there she's present but she's definitely not warm warm with Shauna yeah and they're all sort of little choices we made yeah and you were the new kid in town this season. We, we, we know we finally found out what became of Lottie at the beginning of the season. And um, and then she became this guru of sorts at the healing center. How did you feel about joining the show that had this incredible cast in response to the first season? I was terrified. I felt like I was that new girl at high school, you know, who didn't have the cool clothes or didn't have the cool backpack or the, you know, I, I felt like, are they going to accept me? Um, and I I was, you know, I knew Melanie, so I knew oh, that she's a slam dunk. But the others, I was like, how are they, what are they, you know, am I going... And also when you're bringing in your craft, you know, you're you're coming. I mean, you must realize that when you start a new job or you've delivered a piece, a writing piece, and you're waiting for everybody to read it and, and you've had no feedback, you know. So I was a bit like that. I was thinking, do they know anything about me? And, and also because 
Courtney had crafted and created already the foundation of the character of Lottie. So it's it's even more than just joining a cast through on a new season. I'm coming and playing a character that's already been created. So I felt, I really felt it. I felt the stakes. And I think, you know, I there were probably too many emails to the showrunners with me going, is this okay? Are you happy? Is, is, am I playing her at the right level? Is this all okay? And they'd always come back with their great work, Simone, you know, and I'd be like, okay, thanks, you know, but it's it's taken a while and sort of like, you know, I they're all so cool and whatever, but I was still a bit like cap in hand, like, is this okay? Am I doing it well? Yeah, it was kind of terrifying. Now I can actually... Yeah. We've, no, everyone's we seen the season. Where were where were where was Yellow Jackets in the scheme of things when you signed on? Like, had the Emmys happened, or like had the like had the no, there? it hadn't. Like, I, once I had arrived, that was another thing. The, I arrived in Vancouver, and we started rehearsals in a table read, and then they all left to go off to the Emmys, and I was just the only one <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> in Vancouver what well, they were all fabulous at the Emmys you know I was like oh could have got an after party invite or something <laughs> you know so that was really hard and they were all high when they came back and I was like oh hi again you know <laughs> like the cousin <laughs> the little cousin from New Zealand um so I, I, I sort of you know that was sort of interesting and uh, yeah no the Emmys and I mean that was so incredible like you know you come into a show with a fan base but that's a double-edged sword because you've got all these fans really comparing you to young Lottie right but in the first season they had no they had no opportunity to say well I don't think that Shauna and Shauna or you know Nat and Nat but with me they really gave me a hard time so I purposely didn't read um the reddit or anything like that because they hadn't seen my work yet this was sort of that when my i had been announced as playing adult lottie just so there was me. so much online yeah i'm pulling up photos from things going they don't look alike and the, yeah. she's got different teeth or something you know and i'm like okay so that was i i took a few beats i i took a few kind of shauna punches but um i think we we kind of we got there in the end did Courtney Eaton's portrayal impact you at all? Or do you just say, no, I'm a, it's, you know, we age and we're different than we were as teenagers. Like, or did that impact you at all? Yeah, it, it did to begin with. But then I realized how vastly different the, the storylines were for anything could have happened that time that, you know, Lottie was in an institution in Switzerland, for goodness sake, you know, so and also when I think back, I kept comparing like how I was 25 years ago and so different to who I am today. And also, you know, uh, Courtney in season one is very still in her in, in, in her visions and everything. But I think we do see in the first episode of season two, we see young Courtney, young Lottie, baby Lottie playing and helping people in the institution. And so that's the planting of that seed of where we find the spiritual guru that is present day Lottie. Um, but yeah, I definitely took some some things from Courtney because I wanted the physicality to be there as well. For example, Courtney's about this much taller than me, so a, you know, a good inch, two inches. And so I always wore shoes that had a heel, just so I was always above. I mean, I'm I'm five eight anyway, but I wanted to have that you know, above the other women as well. There were just so many little moments that I sort of, we we chose to make it so she is believable in past and the present. And we see at the end, all of the women come back together um, at Lottie's compound or whatever you want to call it. Um, but Natalie had been there the longest and you had some great scenes and interaction with Juliette Lewis. Um, tension there, but... Natalie sort of came around to the healing process. Talk about working with Juliet. Okay, so she is old school, cool, right? She is so cool, <laughs> like rock and roll cool, you know? Um, and she's kind she's of a so rocker, interesting as a, yeah, she really is. And she's very interesting as a person because she's 
nothing phases her. She knows and has met everybody, you know. She's she's got her own thing going on. She's got her own, you know, vibe. She's very alive. I use that word for her because she's so she's buzzing with this this energy. And every day it's different. And so by the end of it, Julie and I became very close because I had to I had to sort of find a way in with her. And also the status between the two characters is, is really important in those scenes for it to work. You know, and you often see Lottie really looking and taking in Natalie and observing her a lot. So I sort of brought that into our relationship a lot. I would ask her constant questions and I was really like, but that said, she's such, she's just a fucking beautiful person and she's she means so well and you know but her life has been so hectic so you just don't know what you're going to get with Juliet some days you know you just and that kind of is is tantalizing that's kind of the scenes buzz like it, it might be written in one way we end up playing it completely different and and then all the fan, you know we, we became quite intimate with each other and the fans were really picking up on oh my god is this a new love you know, romance between Lottie and Nat. And I think there's a hashtag Lottie Nat forever or something like that. And Juliet and I just sort of had fun with that because we just made it like these two women have found each other again after such trauma. So we were very kind of tactile with each other. And it was lovely. It was really lovely. And also that was part of Lottie's game was to bring her into the fold. So whether that was through a, you know, a beautiful, like warm love and comfort and I think that's what you then see so it's really Lottie's plan to bring her in and entice her into the cult <laughs> yeah and those last couple episodes when yeah. all are together just sort of either in the cabin or sitting around the fire it just looked fun I mean what was the energy like behind the scenes during those moments and what are you talking about? What do you enjoy the most about just being part of this cast? Yeah, I like that. I like sitting in the room, like in the green room, and there's six of us sitting on the chairs and it's a, a bunch of very intelligent women who, and we all have such different lives. You know, I think we're all mothers except for Juliet and, but she's a mother to many animals and friends, you know, and so we all bring something different. And then by the end, after, you know, night eight being out there and stuff, we were playing Trivial Pursuit from a 1980s game that with the prop master had. <laughs> but it was American Trivial Pursuit, you know, and Melanie and I were like, this isn't fair. <laughs> you guys would have won a New Zealand Trivial Pursuit if there was one, you know. And so um, by the end, we were all very much like, hanging out you know going do you want tea should I have tea yeah actually I will, I will get an Earl Grey like you know we were lit we were like that by the end and um it, it was a nice feeling in the green room it was a great feeling you know because we all have such respect for each other and I think by the end by episode nine we're all so embedded in our characters and and the journey and we know what's coming as well and that and that's you need that sometimes as actors you need to know what track you're on, what lane you're in, you know. So, it, yeah, it came together well. I And they're, they're great. It was so much fun. It was fun. And it comes across on the screen. I mean, the chemistry is just incredible on this show. Such an amazing cast, um, including the male counterparts. You know, we talk less about them, but there's... Um, <laughs> They give some great performances. I know, but they are good, aren't they? Like yeah. Elijah's delivery after he shoots the cop in the in the trunk. That was fantastic. Amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. And only Elijah could have pulled that off. And looks so sweet while he's doing it. You know, it. like. like, looks <laughs> like he's just like. Oh, you and by the way. Yeah. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> um, well. He's so great. He's lovely. Season three is coming and we don't know what's going to happen, but we're all going to be ready and waiting for whenever that comes back. Um, and. Simone, congratulations to you, the entire cast and crew. Best of luck to Aww. all of you at the upcoming Emmys. I hope they call as many of your names as possible. And thanks for chatting Lovely. with Old Derby today. Thank you so much for having me. That's wonderful. Thank you. 